Today we're going to look at Boolean algebra for our discrete math. Now, if you've ever done anything with computer science, you're probably familiar with the word Booleans. We use those for our trues and our falses, and that's going to apply to our discrete math, right? Because we've been doing a lot of wondering about if statements are true or false yet, right? So what if we have two statements, right? What if we have a statement X and a statement Y, right? And they can either be true or false. What could we say about X and Y? And that's what this little V here, or upside down V, like it looks like a little mountain. Um, that's what that means. It means and, right? So what can we say about X and Y, right? Now let's use like some sort of real life example to help us think about this, right? Say, say X is Johnny bought oranges and Y is Johnny bought apples, right? So in our first case, both are true. I've bought oranges and apples. So what can we say about the statement, Johnny bought oranges and apples? Well, since we know that I did buy, in fact, buy both of those things, we'd say X and Y are true. Johnny bought apples and oranges, right? Now, okay, now let's remember, X is oranges, Y is apples. Let's not forget that. So in this case, X, right? Um, Johnny bought oranges, but Johnny did not buy apples, right? So what would we say about Johnny bought oranges and apples? Well, we'd say that's false, right? Because I, I didn't buy oranges and apples. I bought oranges, but I didn't buy apples. So in this case, right, if X is true and Y is false, then X and Y, that whole statement will be false. Now, the same logic is going to apply to this next, like if X is false and Y is true, right? So I bought oranges, but I didn't buy apples. Well, then the statement Johnny bought oranges and apples is false because I didn't buy oranges. And now we have this, right? Um, so X, Johnny bought, Johnny didn't buy oranges. Johnny didn't buy apples. So if you had the statement Johnny bought apples and oranges, that's just entirely false. I didn't buy either of those two things. So we'd say that this is false. Now, there's another thing we're going to look at, another little operator, right? Like if and is our operator. We're going to change that. We're going to suppose here, let's just erase some of this already that we have here. We are going to look at what if, what if we were looking at the statement or, right? So we're looking at um, if I bought oranges and apples, what about if I bought oranges or apples? That's a different question. And we did not or with that right side up V. So let's look at our, our little table, this truth table, right? So I bought oranges, I bought apples. Did I buy oranges or apples? Yes, true. I bought oranges. I didn't buy apples. So if we have the statement, did Johnny buy oranges or apples? Well, we would say this is true because even though I didn't buy apples, I did buy oranges. And you weren't asking if I bought both. You were just asking if I bought one or the other. And that same logic holds for me not buying oranges, um, but me buying apples. I, I did buy one of them. So you asking me, did Johnny buy oranges or apples? That'd be a true statement. Yes, I did. Now, in our last case, right? I didn't buy oranges. I didn't buy apples. So did Johnny buy oranges or apples? No, I didn't buy either of those. So we would say false for this. So hopefully, hopefully that made sense. Like, and using these like truth tables are pretty helpful to us, right? Because now we're going to introduce something else. We're going to say um, another operator, right? Which we'll call not, right? So not X or not Y, not as an N O T. And we denote it like this. It's just a straight horizontal line with like a little dip at the end. And we'd say like not X, right? Now, why do we care about this not? Well, what if somebody asked you, well, what, what would be not X or Y, right? This can be a little difficult question, but that's why we write out these truth tables. These truth tables help us see everything and keep track of everything, right? And so if we have this expression, not X or Y, not just gives us the opposite of what we previously had, right? So let's, let's extend this truth table actually. Um, so we have not X or Y. Well, originally X or Y in the, our first case was true. So if we have a not there, that's going to make it false, right? Again, in our second case, X or Y is true, but not X or Y would be false. Again, third case, false. And our fourth case, X or Y was false. So not X or Y would become true. You see what we did there? All we did was just take the opposite of what we previously had. Um, and so that wasn't too hard using, uh, that wasn't too hard to figure out what not X or Y is, right? Um, and notice how I had specifically had these parentheses 
around x or y. What if I wanted to ask the question not x, oops, let's make that, you know, we'll just keep it blue. Let's say not x or y, right? And so in this case, the not is only applying to our x, right? Um, previously, when we looked at this right here, we were thinking about that whole phrase x or y, Johnny bought oranges or apples, and then negating it. In this case, in this uh, case that we want to look at right here, we're looking at the negation of Johnny bought oranges, but my buying apples will stay the same. So let's look at uh, a truth table for this. So what if we had this right here? We have all of our cases set up again. This is the same as the last slide, right? And so let's do our truth table because this might help us out a little bit, right? So let's think about what, what is not X going to be in each situation? Well, in our first two cases, X is true. So not X would become false, right? Nothing too complicated. Um, and in our last two cases, X is false. So not X would be true, just the opposite, okay? And now we want to look at this phrase, not X or Y, right? So we don't even here, let's like, let's just put a whole line through this. We don't even, we don't even care about what's going on over here. We want to look at our two, our two most recent columns right here. Um, so we have true or false. Well, we know from what we just did a couple minutes ago that this will be true. If we have false or false, well, then we get false. If we have true or true, that's true. And if we have false or true, that's true. So notice, notice how we have this right here, true, false, true, true. But if we look back at our other um, not equation that we were doing before, it's completely different. We have false, 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 true. So I just wanted to show that to show that these are, in fact, asking two different questions. So now let's go back to where we were at. Yeah. And that's essentially how what we would do with these uh, with these booleans, true and false, or operators, and, or, and not. It's really not that complicated. Anytime I'm given something that's not as obvious as this equation right here, like not x or y, I think the best route for solving these problems is to always make a truth table. Write out all of our cases for x and y, so both false, both true, one false, one true. And then figuring out each individual little piece. Like I didn't know what not x was going to be. So I made a little column for it and then I was get, I already had Y. So at that point I had not X and I had not, and I had Y and I could figure out what not X or Y is. It might not be the best solution to solving these problems. It might not be the fastest, but it always works and it's what makes most sense to me. So I would recommend just doing what makes most sense to you. Now we're just going to look at a couple properties of our Boolean algebra. This isn't anything too complicated, right? So if we have, x and y, well, that's going to be the same thing as y and x. And the same thing holds for or. If we have x or y, that's equal to y or x. Um, right here, we have x and y in parentheses and z. That's going to be the same thing as x and y and z in parentheses. And again, the same thing can be held, will hold true for um, the operator or. Um, if we have x and true, so that's why I put a t, x and true, that will always equal whatever x is. Because think about it, right? If we have, if x is true, right? So we have true and true, then that's equal to true. If x is false, we have false and true, then that's false. So x and t is always going to be equal to x. And then if we have x or f, x or false, that will also always be equal to x. Let me, let me make this more like an x. That'll always be equal to x. Think about it. If we have false or false, it's equal to false. If we have true or false, equal to true and this this is all just going back to that initial truth table we made so if you're not following up with this go back and like take a look at that um another thing right here if we have not not x that's just equal to x right like if x was true then not x would be false and not not x would be true so we get back to our original x um if we have oh okay so we have like a distributive property right here the second to last thing right if we have x and y or z that's going to be equal to X and Y or Y and Z. And the same thing will hold if we swap the uh, operators like X or Y and Z. You could figure that out yourself with the same logic. And then this last little equation, um, De Morgan's Law, something we have from computer science, if you're familiar with that. Um, if we have not X and Y, that's the same thing as not X. Here, let me put these in parentheses. That's equal to not X or not Y. And then the same thing will hold if we swap the operator. So I'll just write this out real quick. So if we have not X or Y, that's going to be equal to not X and not Y. So those are just some properties for you to know. 
for Boolean algebra if you're taking your discrete math class. But that's all we have today. It's a pretty simple process, but it's going to help us again, like I said in the beginning, our motivation for wanting to know why this is, for wanting to know Boolean algebra in the first place is because that's what we're, we're dealing with statements that are true or false. We want to know what's going to happen if we start combining these statements, if we have this or that, this and that, not this or not that. Um, so yeah, that's going to be everything. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it and I hope you learned something.